With Chapter 10 inventory models, it's important to be able to diagnose the difference between the EOQ and the EPQ model. These particular old exam questions are a good example of that. Let's look. The Happy, Post, the Happy Postage Company sells pre-stamped envelopes. Okay, that's interesting. The demand for pre-stamped envelopes is always 60 a day. Oh yeah, you always need a bunch of parameters to plug into those inventory management formulas. So it helps to start collecting them early. Lowercase d is daily demand. And there's always 200 working days in their year. Okay. It costs Happy Postage Company $100 to set, wait a minute, $100 to, I'm looking at that word, set up. Production, perfect. That's that capital S, the fixed cost of an order. It wants, each time it wants to make a batch of pre-stepped envelopes. Okay, Happy Postage Company can produce 150 pre-stamped envelopes in a working day. That's lowercase p. Good, good, good. I'm finding a lot of stuff here. Uh, and it costs the company 80 cents to keep one pre-stamped envelope in inventory for one year. That sounds odd, but it's absolutely perfect. That is capital H, the cost of holding one unit in inventory for one year. Now, why am I collecting these things? Because I am sure that the questions that follow are going to require the application of um, some formulas. Oh, wait a minute. Which formulas? I said at the beginning it's important to know the difference between EOQ and EPQ. If your scenario, oh, this looks like inventory management, has any mention of how fast you produce. Notice that here, a lowercase p. We are, oh, wait a minute. It said it in this particular scenario. We are in EPQ territory. We need the EPQ formula. Now, it said it in this particular scenario. It doesn't have to say that, okay? Because it's simple. If it says something about how fast you can produce, it has to be EPQ. Otherwise, default, it has to be EOQ. Oh, all right, now wait a minute. What is it we're supposed to answer? How many pre-stamped envelopes does the Happy Postage Company produce each time it sets up to produce pre-stamped envelopes? They said they're using the EPQ formula, so this is just a question asking us to fill out that formula. Oh, right, that formula. How did the EPQ formula read, the economic production quantity? Well, let's see. It's the square root of 2 times D times S divided by H, except, oh, wait a minute, with the EPQ, there's more. That's multiplied by the square root of P divided by P minus D. So, um, all right, now, why, oh, 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 here, maybe I can get it where, right, all I need to do is now fill this out because I collected, right, everything that we need. So, um, okay, EPQ equals the square root of 2 times, now wait a minute, I didn't get very far with the formula, although I thought I had all the pieces. And if you try to work these, which is good, before you watch the video and you got stuck on this one, this might be the reason. Now, capital D in chapter 10, all those formulas, capital D is always annual demand. How many do you need in a year? How many are demanded in a year? This D is daily. So, all right, well, how many did they say they needed in a year? They didn't say. Oh, no, but I figured we were going to use that information right there for something. There's 200 working days. Okay, um, 60 times 200, that right there would be how much you needed in a year, right? If there are 200 working days in the year and you need 60 a day, there, that's what goes in the top. Now the rest of it is as straightforward as it looks. That S is 100 divided by the H we were just remarking is 0 0.8 and then over here right the P is 150 150 minus this is what we need the 60 for daily demand there there's all the numbers where they need to go okay I did that and I got right in here that this was something like 107 or 1732.051 on my calculator oh wait a minute 
if you tried to work this and you didn't get the correct answer, notice that you go, wait a minute, that's my answer. You were using the EOQ formula. This is the EOQ formula right in there. You were using the wrong formula because our formula for the EPQ has this extra part over here where you boost it by, whoops, there's no decimal place there, multiplying it by, I'm just writing what I see in my calculator, 1.290994. Oh, meaning that the overall result is actually 2,236.068. So if you thought that it was that, that's because you were forgetting this part. Oh, which, ooh, wait, we can actually answer a question now. Because there it is, right there. Say, so, oh great, we answered a question. What was that supposed to mean? That's how much they produce, why? Because they're using the EPQ formula. Why would they do that? Because it is minimizing their combined setup and holding costs. Anyway, what do the other questions ask? Oh, speaking of that cost, what is the total annual cost at Happy Postage Company's inventory policy for pre-stamp envelopes? This is the EPQ formula and its companion is the total cost formula that's appropriate for the EPQ environment. That is D divided by Q times S plus Q times P minus lowercase d divided by 2P times H. Oh yeah, this is just another formula we have to fill out. Okay, fill it out. Oh wait a minute, capital D again. If you had trouble with this one, remember it's not the 60, it's 60 times 200. The Q, we're evaluating this policy. Let's make these pre stamped envelopes 2,236 at a time. So that's what goes here. Times 100 plus Q again, we have decided is 2,236. Okay, and then just the 150 minus the 60 times 2 times 150. All of this times 0.8, right? So on my calculator, I get 536.67 plus 536.64. I'm rounding a bit. Oh, okay, wait a minute, but we want to know the overall result, which is $1,073 and some messy decimal places, of which, there it is. They were just talking in round dollars, $1,073. Now, depending on whether you're doing it in Excel or on your calculator, whether you're storing it in memory or writing it down and then putting it back in, you may get slightly different decimal places. It's okay, it's known as numerical instability. But you should still see this condition that's now pretty visible and it's a good check on your math. This is one half of the formula. It's this half right here. That is the total annual ordering costs. I can tell because the ordering cost is embedded in it. This is this half of the formula. That is the total annual holding costs. It is not a coincidence that these two things balance or match. Now the decimal places will mess with it a little bit and that's because we had to do some rounding for the actual Q, but that's not a coincidence. Both the EOQ and the EPQ, when you find that order size and you use it, it's finding the order size that the ordering costs and the holding costs balance. So if you're asked then to assess the total cost of that policy, you should see that in your scratch work. You should see them come out to be at least very, very similar, which they did here. Oh, all right. Now, what else did they ask? How many times a year does the Happy Postage Company produce pre-stamped envelopes? Well, that's easy. That's just the total demand over the course of the year divided by their batch size, which is actually right in here, right, which is why the answer is that, because the ordering cost is that times 100. Anyway, there, answered. Okay, now the rest of these are not about how much to order, they're about when to order. These remaining three are reorder point formulas. Let's look. Lead time for some stock keeping unit is always four days. Okay, let me start taking inventory here again. And demand for that stock keeping unit is 40 per day. Ooh, another little lowercase d. What is the reorder point for this stock keeping unit? Oh, that's easy. 
the reorder point here is just demand during lead time, which is just lead time times however much you need each day, or 4 times 40. That's where we get the answer 160. Reorder point is always based on the anticipated demand during lead time, and here it's pretty obvious, right? Because it's always four days you wait, and it's always 40 per day. Now, start messing with it just a little bit. The reorder point for stock keeping unit 303 is 102 days, okay. Or excuse me, 102 units. I guess I could write that down. ROP equals 102. And the average demand during lead time for that or for order for 303 is 97. Okay, um, all right. Average demand during lead time. I could write that out, or I'm just going to write mu, like the average of an unknown distribution. What's the question? What is the safety stock implied by 303's reorder point? Oh, I remember that a reorder point is average demand during lead time. I'm just using this mu as a symbol of it plus safety stock. That's another way to think of reorder point. There basically wasn't any safety stock up here. Okay, um, well, wait a minute. I have that, I have that. So I just say 102 minus 97 to back out the average demand. Oh, that's where I get five. Right, a reorder point, the safety stock implied in any policy is how much greater is your reorder point versus the average amount you usually need while you wait for an order. Oh, okay. Now, last one. A certain company reorders envelopes when its stock drops to 12 boxes. i kind of running out of room for scratch work here. So let me just get some scratch paper again. Because I was just told the reorder point. I mean, that's the reorder point. Okay. Although demand for envelopes during lead time is normally distributed with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 3. So I was given a picture. I always draw a picture. This is demand during lead time. I'll label it demand during lead time. They said it was normally distributed, so I drew that with a mean of 10. On average, you need 10, so that's where the curve is highest. But there is some wobbling around that, and that is characterized by a standard deviation of 3, right? Yes, 3. Okay, now what's the question? Which of the following is closest to the probability that this company stocking out, stocking out, the probability of stocking out before the new envelopes arrive? The reorder point, just to continue with my illustration, is right here, right? This is on average what they need. This is when they reorder. Now, we were remarking that all of the area of the curve, however much of it is caught to the left of the reorder point, represents happy scenarios in which whatever happened during lead time 12 covered it. It was less than 12, 12 was enough. And we, they didn't ask for this, have a name for that, that's the service level. Okay. Now, yeah, we do need to be careful here. They didn't ask for that. They asked for the probability of the company stocking out. That is what's left over. That is the unhappy part of the curve that whatever happened, you know, this is a number line, it was greater than 12, which means you didn't have enough. That's your stock out risk. So they're asking for what I highlighted in green. Okay, so I know all about the curve, and I know that this cut was made here, and I'm just wondering what portion of it got cut off here to the right. Um, this sounds like a Z question to me. I can take this curve and translate it into a standard normal curve. Why would I do that? Well, hang on to that thought. I can translate my curve into this curve with, yes, this ratio that you've seen a thousand times in other classes. Might as well complete it. X is the number that I'm interested in, okay? 12. That's where I want to cut the curve. This is the center of my curve, okay? That's 10. This is the standard deviation of my curve. That's 3. Okay, well, this is going to work out to be like what? Two thirds? Or 0.67? Yes, I get a z-value. Oh, for this scenario, I get a z-value of 0.67. What am I going to do with that? I'm going to take it to the z-table. 
I'm going to take it to the Z table because it's the Z table that tells me things about how much of a normal curve got cut off to the left or to the right. And I, aha, this is the best one. Because a Z table tells me how much of a curve is, oops, to the left, if you make a certain cut in it, except it's a standard normal curve, its mean is zero and its variance is one. Anyway, that's what I changed my X into. I want to take this 0.67 and look it up here. It's the equivalent of making the cut right at 12 on my own curve. Okay, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. I just want to make sure I get the absolute right one. Ah! 7, aha, 0 0.7486. 0 0.7486, got to remember that number. 0 0.7486. 0 0.7486. 0 0.74. 0 0.74. 0 0.74. That's this area in here. That's, oh, about 75%, but don't answer that. That's not the answer to the question because that is the service level, right? Which means, what's the stock out risk? Well, it's one minus that. So it's not about 75%. The stock out risk is about 25%, the actual opposite of that, okay? You say, yeah, but when I said 1 minus 0 0.7486, I got like a bunch of decimal places. Yes, but the question asks, which is the closest? And that's actually also why in all exam directions, it always says, please, ans please select the best answer of the following five answers so that uh, we can all get different little decimal places, but still arrive at the same conclusion.